Hello, welcome everyone. I am really excited to do this with you. Uh, Frank and I, we actually tried to do this like two different times and uh, things messed up and Zoom, I blame you, okay? Because <laughs> they did this thing where I couldn't hook up an external camera and use it anymore. And so I have no idea why they did that, but um, that's another uh, conversation that I'll be having with Zoom, Mr. Zoom, whoever you are. But I'm so excited because this was Frank's idea and I love the idea. We're gonna do something today called a live brew where both Frank and I, we're gonna do pour over coffee, but I, I'm really excited because you guys, you guys have a treat. Frank is kind of a guru of coffee and a pour over. And I don't wanna take away from the story because he's gonna introduce himself, but I'm super excited because I get to learn from the master right now. This is the master, Frank Law. And uh, Frank is um, a part of a coffee company. It's my favorite coffee, and I'm not just saying that. This is not a sponsored video. Frank's paying me nothing right now. Uh, Copa Vita Coffee. This is uh, uh, Frank's company here, and they make truly my favorite coffee in SoCal. And again, this oh, is not sponsored. Uh, they pay me nothing. Okay. Yeah, we yeah we made him pay for it. <laughs> um, Frank, uh, why don't you get, uh, just give an opportunity to the people, just introduce who you are, and I kind of forgot like where, are uh, you like a part owner of the company or something like that, so go ahead and explain. Yeah, yeah, that, I can share all uh, that. About that, and then um, just a little bit about your family, uh, so go ahead, Frank. Yeah, so um, my name is Frank, uh, and I'm one of the uh, one of the partners with Copa Vida, and um, helped start it back in 2013. And uh, my journey to coffee kind of happened by circumstances, not by decision or design per se. Um, graduated college in 2010 from UC Riverside. Riverside, whoop whoop. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, we graduated at a time where the recession was pretty bad and a lot of, a lot of companies weren't hiring um, kids straight out of college at the time. And so uh, I've always had an interest in cooking. I've always had an interest in the culinary side of things. And uh, I had an opportunity to work at a coffee shop. And at that time, I didn't know anything about coffee, but I thought it'd be a, an interesting opportunity. So I uh, started working at a coffee shop uh, called Bricks and Scones in, uh, on a, in LA. And um, they were using a, a coffee company called Intelligentsia at the time. And I had no idea what that was, but I was like, cool, this is tasty. I was putting cream and sugar and everything. But uh, but yeah, that was kind of my first uh, introduction back in 2010. And uh, uh, eventually went on to uh, work at a, a few other coffee companies, um, including La Mille, uh, and helped start with a, a, a cafe in Little Tokyo called Cafe Dulce. And then eventually helped start uh, Copa Vida with uh, Steve and with Sam. And um, yeah, so here we are, seven years later, um, and um, still with the company. And uh, my title has, has now changed uh, to Director of Quality and Innovation. And so part of my job is making sure uh, we bring in the right copies uh, with the team that we have there. We um, make sure our team knows how to make that copy right. Uh, and, uh, and part of the innovation is just making sure um, we're always being on top of new trends and and being uh, on the cutting edge of the industry. So uh, yeah, that's what I'm doing for a couple of videos right now. I, I knew Frank and Sam, is, uh, Sam is one of the other partners, uh, when they were college students, and I used to be uh, on this campus ministry staff, pastoral staff, and I used to be uh, for like a year or two, uh, their kind of campus staff pastor, and Frank and I and Sam, we actually did a lot of uh, campus ministry together, um, classic UR, uh, yeah. which Frank was part of the legendary UR staff. It's the staff that my wife and I, Hannah, still talk about, 2008, uh, best UR staff ever. Um, we made this awesome 24 minutes season two together. It was awesome. <laughs> but um, it, it's so cool to see you now uh, doing Copa Vida. And uh, we had a lot of yeah. fun back in those days. Yeah, so this my wife, we, who's, a, who's an actress now, uh, she was in a movie called Searching. Um, she... What doesn't want to watch any of my stuff? <laughs> <laughs> that that's that's messed up, man. 
I Come know. on. I'm hey, like, I got two. some chops. I got, yeah. some, I got some mac and chops. Yo, yo, season two, I'm going to send John Cho season two of 24 Minutes, okay? And you're going to be in searching part two, all right? You're going to be in part two. Um, okay, so uh, this is going to be really awesome and fun. What we're going to do here, guys, is uh, Mr. Frank is going to do pour over coffee first, and I'm going to watch the master at work. Before you go, Frank, you were in like a barista competition a long time ago, right? Yeah. And you got like yeah. second place or first place. Um, what was that barista competition about, and like what was that experience like? Yeah, so um, when I first started in coffee, uh, I first heard of competitions through the local circuit, which is – latte art competitions, which is like held by cafes and baristas. And it's very low risk, uh, low stake. Um, you know, you usually put in five bucks and then winner takes all kind of thing. So that was my first introduction to, to this, like this niche um, subculture of coffee competition. And then I saw um, uh, what, what is now called the U.S. Barista Championships. And the way it used to work back in the day is there would be regionals and we had six regionals. We had the Southwest, Southeast, uh, Midwest, Mideast, uh, um, sorry, not Mideast, um, yeah, South and North Mid. And then we had uh, East and um, uh, North and Southeast. And so there were six regions and mm -hmm. they would get um, the top six from each, uh, each region. And then, uh, and then we would meet uh, for the United States, the actual U.S. barista competition. And so the first year I competed was, I, I believe, in 2012. And um, uh, it's, uh, the, the format goes like this. You get 15 minutes uh, to present your copy. And you can choose whatever copy you'd like. And uh, you present to four judges, four sensory judges, and then you have two technical judge uh, and then one head judge. And the four sensory judges, they, uh, they're the ones tasting and grading your, comp your coffee. And then the technical judges are, are judging you and giving you points on your technicality. And then the head judge is kind of making sure everyone's calibrated. And so you, get, uh, you, get, you have to present an espresso, you have to present a cappuccino, and you have to present a signature beverage. And so yeah, 15 minutes to do that. And um, the first year I ever did it, I just stumbled through it. I barely made my way through it. And um, uh, I just really wanted to do well for some reason. I just really, I'm very competitive by nature, I guess. So I really, really wanted to do well. And so the next year, um, uh, when I was with Copa Vida, this was our first year, uh, I just dedicated a couple months That's to just true. competing and uh, just just really focusing on my my routine and eventually uh, I placed I ended up placing third third in the southwest and then I went to nationals uh, in Seattle uh, in 2013 so that was that was yeah seven years ago um, so it's and been you a were while. in that movie I think it was called Barista or something like that. It's a documentary. Yeah, it was a documentary. Yeah, Barista. I saw you. I saw you because there's a shot of you in the very beginning where you're actually doing the competition. Of course, they only showed you like 1.5 seconds of you. And then I remember there's another shot of you. You were with two other people. It looked like you guys were praying together. And I knew that was you because you were in the same clothes. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then there was another shot where um, you were opening up like at that time a pop-up at Copa Vida for – another guy to like practice he's like the guru of poor copy what was his name again yeah. i mean that was that was fabricated that was fabricated, oh, it was fabricated. Yeah. Man. that was for sure fabricated it was yeah they used our pop-up and made it seem like this is where people secretly practice yeah but uh no it wasn't it wasn't like that it was just that's where our pop-up was and that's where i was practicing and we did a mock you know a mock competition but you know it wasn't a secret place where people were, were practicing how dare but it makes it me. it makes it fun you know it makes it fun <laughs> what liars they <laughs> like to me i'm so mad right now okay enough talk let's do this frank what what are, what are you brewing today what beans are you using today yeah so today i'm actually going to be brewing our uh guji natural and it's uh, uh one of one of my favorite coffees right now but it's a uh, an ethiopian coffee and um, it's a natural process coffee, meaning that uh, when they process the coffee, so the way they remove the two seeds inside of the cherry, which 
which is what a copy is. It's it's the roasted product of, of two cherries inside, uh, two seeds in a cherry. Um, the, the natural process actually keeps the whole cherry intact and then dries it natural dries it um, in the sun. So you can imagine kind of like a raisin, and it just shrivels up. And the idea is with that, the flavors kind of make their way into the beans that way. Okay, I saw that. I'm gonna be getting that next time. All right, yeah. let's see the master here at work. I need All right, a... let me show you guys my my, uh, my gear. So this is the Kaya scale. Ooh. Ooh. You can even personalize a message right here. So I have my message going on. Let me see that right. floats. This is what professionals use, you guys, okay? Masters <laughs> use Kaya, okay. <laughs> Here you go. So you can mess. You can personalize this message. Oh, look at that! Michelle is his wife's name, and uh, of course he's gonna write. Yeah, I get, I get points for this. <laughs> Frank, Frank is not only a barista master; he is a romantic master. All right, awesome. I love this. Now, Frank, while you're grinding, uh, are you doing like more of a coarse grind, more of a medium grind, somewhere in the middle? So, so I'm brewing with the V60. So um, because it's a single hole and it's it's a pretty large point of extraction, um, uh, I'm I'm going I'm going pretty fine. Oh, okay. Going pretty fine. So so I'm using uh, a Barazza Encore, uh, and on that I would say it's in the top twenty percent grind setting, in, on, in terms of fineness. Okay. So again, this is a time for me to learn and kind of like ask you questions. I thought like fine grinds were more like, um, okay. Uh, I thought fine grinds were more for like espresso. And like, I always heard that if you grind too fine, then it might get too clogged in here. Yeah, so I mean, realistically with most home grinders, you can't, you can't grind fine enough for espresso. Okay. Like uh, on a commercial grinder, the grinds are so fine. Like the, the difference between a grind setting is so, you can't even discern it by the eye, but you, it, it really makes a huge impact on the way it extracts. But uh, with the home grinder, you really can't get to that point. So you wouldn't be grinding a copy that's at an espresso level on a commercial, in a, in a, in a real life cafe setting. Okay. So, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and grind it and then I'll show you kind of what it looks like. This is so exciting. Listening just to Frank grinding his coffee beans. Just that sound. Wow. That's what true masters grinding their beans sound like. Awesome. I like to kind of compare it to kosher salt. So if you look at the grind size, more or less close to, to kosher salt. And the other thing, the other issue I don't, the other reason why I don't grind so coarse on a home grinder is because, you know, realistically, these grinders aren't that great in terms of consistency. So when we, uh, on, the, on the cafe level, uh, when we buy a coffee grinder, we want to buy a grinder that will let us get a grind size evenly distributed, meaning uh, the grind size particles, the distribution of that is very, very similar. So you're not going to get super coarse and then super fine and then a lot, uh, and somewhere in the middle you get you get what you want your target. You want that target to be wider and you want your um, your, your deviations to be slimmer on the on the outside. But with home grinders, uh, because of the quality of the burrs, when you grind coarse, you end up getting these like huge chunks, and you really don't want to, you want to avoid that as much as possible. And what do you uh, heat your water to? What's the water temperature? I get it right to boil. So for, for my setting, it's 210. 212 is the boiling point. I, I have mine set at 210. Yep. And so we're accomplishing two things there. We're warming the dripper itself, and then also getting rid of the paper taste. And though this is the white paper, and I noticed you're using the brown. The brown paper filter, you really want to rinse a lot of water through because uh, there's a lot of that papery taste in that, in that filter. Just to let everyone know, I use the brown one because I'm a pastor, I have no money. So the brown one is cheaper. <laughs> so I have to use the ones that are made out of recycled paper. Okay, so this is for the cheapo, non-budget coffee people. All right. Hey, it's, if, you, if, you, if you actually calculate a per filter, it's like a penny, penny difference. Okay, so what I'm doing now is two things. I'm gonna be doing like a, creating like a divot. So, uh, ah. oh, so I'm creating a small divot. And the reason why I'm doing that is because you wanna think of the bloom 
as a saturation. We're not, we're not extracting here, right? So the goal of this isn't to extract. The goal of this is to evenly saturate your grinds. And when you just pour on a flat bed, it's, it's hard for that water to reach the bottom. If you can imagine, you have a pre-wet pre -wet on top, and then you have dry in the middle or in, towards the bottom. Then when you're extract, when you're beginning your extraction, you have uneven extraction because you have coffee that's already ready to extract and then under extracted right here. I'm, I created like a small divot ah, right there. Okay. Okay. All right. And so when you pour the water, it'll really get get there nice and evenly. And then we're gonna stir. So my my bloom amount is two times my doses dosage. So I'm using 26 grams. So I want to cover at least two times that amount. So two times is the minimum. I always go above that. So I, I usually hit it to about 60 to 70. So we're gonna go, I'm starting my timer, hitting it with water. And then when I hit my mark, I'm gonna go ahead and start stirring. And I'm, I'm being pretty aggressive with my stirs because once again, we're not extracting right now, right? We're not worrying about over agitating because we, we, we literally cannot over agitate because we're not extracting at this point. We're penetrating and we're saturating. So if you can see the bloom here, nice and even. And also your bloom time Master's is dependent. Bloom. Master's bloom. <laughs> your bloom time is really dependent on, on how fresh your coffee is. So if your coffee is less than a week old, I might go to like 35, 40 seconds. If it's past the week old, I might go to, um, I might go just a little bit less than that uh, to like 30, 25 seconds. So you want to let it bloom until you stop seeing really uh, any activity. Yeah, my first pour is uh, to 200 grams and I'm setting that base um, pretty, uh, it's the most amount of water I'm adding. And the reason why we're doing that is we want this, we call, we call um, water and coffee together, we call that a slurry. We want our slurry temperature to be hot. And so my first pour is is a big, it's a it's it's, a, it's the largest pour we make for that reason. And then we're gonna go ahead and do our third pour. And this one, I'm, I'm just adding 100 grams. So it's going up to 300 grams. And I work my way from in to out. Now how important so, is the actual pour over technique? Like right now, you just said you go in to out. I've seen, blue bottle YouTube videos where they say they go from out to in and then back out again. Does it really matter or does it? I don't know. You know, it's, it's, if I, if I gave a, 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 a master barista or a master taster, <laughs> one that went from out to in and then one that yes. went from in to out, I, I will tell you that almost no one can tell the difference. But you know, for, for me, it's just, a, it's something I, I, I commit to and I stick to. And so I'm used to that, right? I, I, I do in to out. But I, you want to just pour in a way where your cover, your cover, your color is even, right? And so this is the last pour. I go out. You see my out pour. I'm, I'm bringing those high and dries in, and then I'm coming back in, and then working my way out. So again, you do this a normal 60, 70 gram pass, and then you go to 200, and then you do 300 and then to 400, is that correct? To 415, to be exact. 415, okay. Yeah. So most of the videos that I watch or that kind of the standard of pour over, they always say to do um, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60. Um, what's the difference between that and what you're doing? And this is, this is in my opinion, you're gonna get a much more uh, evenly and more efficiently extracted coffee because you're using, um, you're adding a lot of water at, at the same uh, at one time and so your temperature your slurry temperature meaning the temperature that's in here right now is high when you add 60 grams at a time your slurry temp it it just physically it, um it can't be it, it can't be hot or it can't be high right because you're only adding so little at a time right and so when you have a lot more hot water just thermal inertia you got you have a lot more uh, uh, much more higher temperature in the slurry. Thermal inertia. Did you guys hear him say that? Thermal <laughs> inertia. I think the I'm only using it wrong. true baristas know how to talk like that. That is awesome. Now, how important, Frank, is it to get to that two and a half minute mark? That's also something I always read about and watched that you should try to pour within two and a half minutes. I mean, I think that's 
I, I would say that's a good benchmark, right? But with, with everything, it's we can't control every circumstance, right? And so uh, uh, with, with that two minute and 30 mark, it's a good benchmark to hold on to. But if it goes over, you know, I think, I think a lot of times people psych themselves out and they go, oh, I went over. This is a three minute brew. And then you, you already had that in mind and you, you take a sip and you're like, oh yeah, it's a little off. You, you people who brew at home, they, I feel like that throws them off more than anything else. For example, this right now is finishing at like four minutes and uh, four minutes and 15 seconds. And if I handed you this, or if I handed someone else this, they, t- they would take a sip and be like, oh my gosh, this is good. But, but part of it is perception. It's like, you know, it's like, oh, it's because someone who's been doing this for many years handed me this cup, it's gotta be good. So I feel like a lot of it's confidence, like, when I, when I when I brew at home, I just I just brew confidently. I don't I don't try to overthink it. And then another thing is hitting your numbers. So I think sometimes people sacrifice technique by trying to hit the numbers exactly, as opposed to uh, focusing more on technique and letting yourself maybe go over five or even ten grams. Like I think that's totally fine. I think it's more important to focus on your technique, your flow that's coming out of your kettle. And that sort. So much good stuff that I'm learning right here. This is awesome. Now, Frank, what are some other uh, coffee uh, companies and coffee beans you like besides your own? Um, what does a master barista like to drink besides his own kind of company's coffee? <laughs> um, I mean, there's uh, definitely, you know, I, I would say nowadays that barrier to entry um, for companies to make good coffee is so low that so many coffee companies out there are producing such good, like a lot of really good product. Um, but for me, uh, I would say kind of growing in this industry, the, the companies I looked, looked up to were companies like uh, Madcap, which is a company out in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Um, I would say companies like Heart. Heart is a, you know, I would say a lot of coffee professionals, um, favorite coffee 49th parallel out of uh, Canada is another great company I would say companies like Verve I grew up really admiring so uh, yeah those are some of my favorite coffee companies for sure when you said heart like h-e-a-r-t heart coffee Mm -hmm. yeah heart out of Portland well I'll be I'll be buying some of those stuff now because you recommended it yeah Okay, while Frank is finishing up, I'm going to get started now. And now Frank is going to be my master class barista instructor here. And he's going to be helping me make the best pour over coffee I've ever made in my life. In my life. I have two here that I bought. I'm going to be going with uh, I have both a Colombia and Ethiopia. And I think I'm going to be choosing this Ethiopia, okay? Because uh, Frank Ooh. also chose the Ethiopia. Yes, the Nano Chala. The Nano Chala, okay, or Chala, if you want to have a little bit of dialect in there, okay. Uh, Pink lemonade, jasmine tea, and agave. I don't know if I'm going to taste all that. So let's do this, (laughs) all right? Check this out. I've been waiting for us to do this. I haven't even opened it yet. So here's the the first, first open kind of smell that I get here. We get to enjoy this together. Oh my goodness, I'm in the third heaven right now. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Look at that. This is what true coffee is supposed to smell like. Copa Vita, guys. Okay, this is not a sponsored video, okay? I'm not paid <laughs> to say that. You guys need to buy this right now, okay? Um, Frank showed you his scale. It was something called Akaya, some like kind of master scale. I have something called Ozeri, all right? Uh, hey, there we go. $12.95 on Amazon. Again. Hey. This is what pastors use, okay? Here we go, all right? You know, I, I didn't buy this. I, I won it at, at a competition. That's the only okay. reason why I have it. I can't afford <laughs> it either. It. He didn't buy it. He uh, won it. Okay, so you got some saving grace right there. Here we go. Oh, just smelling that again. Oh my goodness. I feel like yeah, I'm so we, we do we do a, a 16 to 1 ratio. So I don't know whatever ratio you're going to do, but 16 to 1 is what we consider in our, in our, in our industry the golden ratio. And so you can go up and down from there, but it's a good starting point, in my opinion, for most no, no, no. I, I'm, I'm listening to the master barista right now. I will also do a 16-1 ratio. So I have 26 grams of coffee here. 
and I'll also make 415 grams of Ethiopia Nano Chala. Okay, here Chala. we go. All right. And um, again, on a passage budget, I don't have the burr grinder. I have the Capreso. All right. And uh, hey, that's I'll a burr grinder. Oh, it is. <laughs> that's a burr grinder. <laughs> All right. I didn't even know that. Look at that. So yeah. Nice. So see, okay. see what a, what a burr grinder is is, if, is a, if there's a uh, uh, two sets of grinders, one on top, one on bottom, and that's a burr grinder. You don't want wow. a blade a blade grinder. Yes. Okay. So you're saying right now I'm at the highest medium setting. You, you're saying I should go into fine setting. Let's give it a try. I mean, <laughs> yeah, maybe not extra fine. I would go maybe into. Uh, the third rung of the fine setting. Do okay. You, do you ever go that way? No, I usually stay in kind of like this medium kind of area. I live in medium land. I thought I was supposed to stay there. Well, you're telling me I need to go into let's, fine land. Let's try. Let's try fine. Fine. Switch it up. Let's switch it I'm up. I'm fine. Okay. I'm fine and good looking. All right. So I am going to grind this right here. Grinding my beans. Oh, I got Zoom out here. Okay. And while that's grinding, I'm gonna go keep my water. Okay, now Frank, do you ever do this? I, I always like to kind of clean it out in the inside here because um, this this grinder has to last me for a very long time. I don't have the budget you know, to buy honestly, another one. Honestly, you know, honestly, what you're doing is is truly extending the shelf life of that grinder. Oh, look at that. Yeah. That is feel... that's discipline. That is crazy. Oh. Gosh, I, I, I am the world's okayest pastor, and I just feel like I've been so uh, encouraged right now. Oh my goodness, you guys. Frank, the master barista, just told Dude, me. Dude, that is, that's amazing. Honestly, I think you are above 90% of home brewers by oh, doing just gosh. that right there. I'm gonna cry, you guys. I'm gonna cry right now. I, I do this every single time, Frank, every single time, because yes. That's I need awesome. This, I need this to last, man, okay? Uh, this is also a gift that uh, Hannah got for me for Christmas. And, oh, yeah. Uh, you know, there's only so many shekels that she can uh, kind of save. And um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, I, I have to have this uh, grinder last. Wow, I feel like crying right now. Uh, Frank Law, Mr. Frank Law just uh, gave me a compliment here. So, Frank, you know, uh, before I got into pour over coffee, I was a total coffee faker. The only thing that I drink was mocha. That's it. That's all I drink. That's the only thing I drink, mochas. And then um, I started to get fat. And then um, actually my blood test, I got a blood test once and, and I was getting borderline pre-diabetic. Wow. So because I had to start cutting out sugar, but I needed coffee on my drive home because I, mm -hmm. my church is in Irvine, but we live in Brea. And so the traffic is like almost an hour back. And there's just no way oh, I could wow. survive uh, without coffee. So my friend at church, he's also uh, on staff with me. He's the high school pastor. He showed me how to pour over coffee. And then that's how I started getting into it. And dude, I was like, this is the nastiest thing in the world. I never liked black coffee. And then like just, just drinking it more and more and more. After a month, I just, I started to develop a taste for it. So mm -hmm. um, that's how that's how it happens. It, it was really fun. I mean, really yeah, cool. I would say I would say there's no there's nothing wrong about drinking a mocha. There's nothing wrong about drinking a vanilla latte. In a lot of ways, that's a gateway. It's a gateway into starting a journey into appreciating, you know, black coffee pour overs. Um, I, it's rare for someone to jump straight in. You know what I mean? Like for me, I for me the gateway drug to coffee was the mocha ice blended from coffee bean. I would drink that all the time. And then eventually it became vanilla lattes. That was like my go-to. Like just really that creamy, sweet drink. And then and then eventually it became just pour overs and black coffee and, and espresso as well. Just straight up espresso. That's a different beast I would say. Um, I don't know if I if I didn't work in coffee if I would if I if I, if I would have the budget to to keep up with uh, an espresso only uh, menu I would say. Frank, do you ever watch Conan and Jordan Schlansky? Do you ever watch those guys? Yes, dude, dude. that guy is so funny. The, the, the intelligence episode. I, I, I yeah, watched that, that was all the time. hilarious. 
I just still watch that. You know what's so, so funny? So that, that girl, girl Eden, that girl, movie. that girl Eden, I placed third, and I was, I was, and she placed second. I was mm-hmm. one and a half points behind it. Oh. So it's literally I could have like dust I could have cleaned my station a little better and I would have gotten but you know uh, more points. So I was that close from getting second. But hey, uh, just whatever. just for cleaning your station more. Man, gosh, what the heck? And then you could have been in that movie because Edith was in that movie. She was like one of you the. No, honestly, they were asking me to be be in the movie, but oh, uh, yeah, they were. I was gonna be a featured featured. Uh, featured barista but but, but you didn't uh, do that as humility right because you're too no, humble I, I i don't think i if i had i mean honestly i thought it was going nowhere to be honest i thought that movie was going nowhere so i just i reluctantly did interviews for them so i did i did a handful of interviews with them and uh, i was being considered as, as one of the one of the featured baristas but i just didn't really care for it that much is that michelle's mom Oh, that's my mom. We're we're at uh, my parents' place. For, oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. We're quarantining at my parents' place for the month. Okay, here we go. I am cleaning my cheap budget dripper, the brown paper. This is all I can afford. You know what's I a fun work. exercise is actually tasting that water you just brewed. You really? can really taste the paper. Ooh. Okay. I'm not gonna do that because that sounds gross. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm gonna warm up my uh, my cup here. Do you guys do this? Warm up the cup. Yes, for sure. I always say this in my pour over show. This is what separates the amateurs from the masters here. Okay, the cup is warm. Here is this. I'm gonna go straight onto the cup. Boom, boom. Here we go. Oh, I'm so nervous. I'm like shaking right now. I'm shaking. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Got my timer. Can I see it? Yes, you can see it. Oh, that looks good. That looks good. Okay. That's Ooh. that looks good. I, I'd be happy with that. Oh my goodness. That's my second compliment. You guys, I might I might change my career. We get past our own ministry. I might uh <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna create my divot. Oh, I'm gonna get a real spoon, okay? Hold on yes. a sec. Look at this. IKEA kid spoon. Okay. There we go. That's we perfect. Go. This is what you guys do when you got kids, okay? Creating my little divot here. Make make that even make that even more angled. Like go try to like make it cone shaped. Yeah. Cone there shaped. There we go. Really like spread it out, you're saying. Yes, yes. Here we go guys. Gonna do my first pass here. Setting my timer. My hand's shaking. Here we go. Then you said to mix it all up, right? Mix it all up. Stir it all together. Like, go deep. Go deep. deep. Don't be oh, shared. Deep. There you go. Oh, okay. Okay. See, there heard, we like, go. Yeah, don't agitate. I was always so like... Uh... Yeah, so here's the thing. You're not extracting there. You're not extracting any coffee. You're, you're more... Think of this as more of penetration. It's like we're trying to let the coffees absorb that water. There's my deep coffee. That looks good. I'm almost at 45. And you said I'm going to go to 200 now, right? Yes. 200. So here is my second pass. Yeah, and so the key thing is here is just making sure you're pouring in a way where the color, uh, you're not you're not having like dark spots and blonde spots. I think what you're doing is great. You're just kind of evenly distributing the water. It looks good. All right. So there's my first pass. I'm at 200. Now, how long do you wait? Because I've never done up to 200 before. How long do you wait before you do the second pass? Yeah, so typically I like it. To, I like to see it go down about a half an inch. Um, and oh, okay. timing it all depends on how you you know how long your bloom was, right? But right around there it looks pretty good in my opinion. Should I go outside in or inside out? No, inside out, inside out, inside out on this one. Now I'm going to 300. You said right? Yep, 300. And that's good. Yeah, you. Um, and that's the other thing I like to share is uh, making sure when you're pouring, if you're pour- you're letting the water fall out of your 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 kettle instead of shooting out. A lot of times people have such a heavy hand that it's like shooting out, and ah. you're you're, dist- you're disturbing your bed a little bit more than you want to. So that looks good. That's my third compliment, guys. Yeah. <laughs> 
Okay. And then and on the last one, last pass, right? You, you want to yeah, work outside. Outside in. Yep. You want to reincorporate those high end drives. Yep. There you go. And then go back in and then work your way back out. Yes. I'm going to uh, 415 on this one. There we right. go. Woo! There it is. That is it. I'm putting this away because I don't want to touch it. Because if I do, I'm going to scream like a girl. Dang, I did not. So many new things that I learned here. So what's uh, what's what are some of the main differences from this brew and your brew? Okay, so what I usually did, because I did a medium grind all the time. Hold on, let me adjust this again. So because I did a medium grind all the time, I, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Hello, hello. Hi. Hi. Can I get your autograph? Can you somehow? <laughs> write it on a piece of paper and can you mail it to me somehow <laughs> is that possible uh michelle you, seriously 24 season two it's it's a really good movie that frank made i think you should give it a chance uh we should uh what season send it, i'm never watching that <laughs> send it to john cho i'm gonna send it to john cho i think he'll like it i think he'll like it <laughs> how are you are you are you doing okay are you doing well baby yeah, Frank's mom's helping so much. Oh my goodness. Hi. Hi, her, Bailey? Yeah. Right? Hi. Bailey Hi. Gianna La. Wait, say that again? Bailey Gianna La. Oh, Gianna. Okay. Hello, hello. How is uh how's Bailey sleeping? She's sleeping better these days. She just turned two months. So. Okay. It's pretty well. Oh. Hey, any sleep that, you, that that baby gets, you're blessed. You know, all of our kids, Matthew, Haven, they never slept well. They woke up every two to three hours past past one, past year one. Even right now, our two month old, oh my gosh, she wakes up like every hour and a half. It's the worst, dude. The Lord um, is punishing me for something I did. Something. Okay. Are right, so you saying about your your grind size? So because I always did a medium grind size. I would do my first pass of 60 grams, and then I did a slow pour all the way up to like 400. I just did the whole thing. Sometimes I would do 60 gram passes, but because um, my my water wasn't flowing through at a fast enough rate, I was always pouring like past the like minutes. So to try to match two and a half, I would just do slow pour. And the other pour, which I think I used to do was. 60 grams and then I would do um, kind of like what you did. I would do a, a hundred and then a hundred and then the last pass to whatever I needed to get to. This this uh, it, it is a little bit similar to what I just did, but I never did the outside in, inside out. I never changed that up. I never did that. Got it. So let's smell this, okay? Um, ooh, ooh, I think I'm really smelling that pink lemonade here, okay? Mm -hmm. mm. A little bit of now. Is this first crack coffee or second crack coffee, Frank? Okay. Definitely first crack. First crack coffee. If you guys don't know what that is, man, you guys are amateurs. Okay, you guys need to be professionals. Like Frank and I here. Okay, first crack coffee. All right. Starbucks. They thought they knew about that blonde roast, calling it second crack coffee. They don't know. They don't know. All right. All right. Here we go, guys. Ethiopia, Nano Chala. Okay. Copa Vita. Oh my goodness, this is this is the greatest. This is the greatest coffee ever. So good. All right. I, I'm really that pink lemonade is really coming through here. Man, I feel like I'm drinking pink lemonade from Minute Maid right now. This is so <laughs> awesome. Oh my goodness. Now Frank, tell me a little bit about body and um and acidity because mm. for me I, I like full body coffee. I really like full body coffee. But tell me like what the difference between full body, medium body, and whatever else there is. So typically, typically, and this is kind of uh, a generalization if I may, um, usually the darker your coffee is roasted, uh, the bigger body you'll have. Because it's much more soluble when, you, when you're extracting, um, you're gonna get much more of the, the, the body from the coffee um, in that way. And the lighter coffees are typically lighter body. Um, and just that's just the way that coffee is roasted and the way we extract it you know, on a solubil on solubility level. 
um, what it translates to. And then acidity, you know, I always thought acidity meant like literally acidic, like sour. But what does acidity really mean? Yeah, so so acidity is an interesting one. It's something that um, I think people confuse with sourness um, um, very often. Acidity is a plus. Acidity is a good thing. And most people think automatically acidity is bad. Uh, and I would say sourness is bad. So, um, for example, um, I always say there's acidity in almost a- any fruit we, we eat, right? So, uh, a, 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 an, an apple, for example, without acidity would be very, very boring. It'd be like the um, Washington apples we get from our school lunches. Just, just very sweet. There's not a lot of acidity to it, but when you compare compare that to a pink lady apple or a, a Fuji apple, um, they have a lot more acidity that that pairs with sweetness, and that's the I think the key thing. Uh, is you need acidity to be paired with sweetness. It can't be overly acidic acidic on its own. Uh, it needs to it needs to be combined with sweetness for it to be a really beautiful thing, and so. Uh, I always say, think of sour as unpleasant, something that you don't want, and think of acidity as something that's a positive. It, 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 uh, it, it adds complexity to coffee, to almost anything. Right? Now, what, yeah. what does it mean that when I do pour over sometimes and like I can't, I can't taste like the coffee at all? It just, it like almost tastes like hot water to me. What, what, what did I do wrong? So that means usually that you didn't extract your coffee enough. And when we talk about the, when we break down. Um, an actual brew, we think of uh, coffee in two ways. We think of it uh, in terms of extraction, and then we th- think of it in terms of strength. Strength is how strong your coffee is, and that's determined by how much coffee or how little coffee you use. So that's strength, okay? So you can have a, a high, uh, you can have an over-extracted strong coffee, and you can have an under-extracted strong coffee. People, I think people sometimes don't realize that the two can exist. And so you, you have a strong or weak coffee, and then you have a under extracted or over extracted. And uh, when we when we think of extracted, is we we think of the actual coffee bean. A coffee bean. Let me just break it down for you. A coffee bean is looks like this, right? And only 30% of this is soluble. Everything else is inorganic, insoluble material. Meaning, if I broke this down as as fine as I can, and I use like molten hot water, we can only extract 30% of this into our cup. The 70% of it will always stay as a solid. 30% is too much. We don't want 30%. I, I, no, one will, no one will ever enjoy a 30% extracted coffee. We want, our, we want to extract about 18 to 22% of it. So that's where we live. And these days with, with the technology we have and with the grind quality we have, and uh, with uh, meters that we can read extraction with, with those equipment, we are venturing now into 24% uh, extraction coffees. Usually when, it's, when you t- taste coffee and it tastes like watery, it, uh, or you're not getting much flavor, I, I would say that's because you're not extracting enough from the coffee. Meaning you, you left some, some more left in the coffee bean without fully taking out everything that it has to offer. Thank you so much, Mr. Frank Locke, Copa Vida Coffee, all right? I'm gonna put a link in the description below because Copa Vida is now shipping their coffee, which just happened recently, actually. And so I'm really yes. happy because I was never able to get Copa Vida because you guys are far away from me. Um, this is not a sponsored video. I don't get paid anything to do this. <laughs> this truly is my favorite coffee. I went to San Diego for vacation two years ago, and I went to Copa Vida every day. People really thought that I went to Copa Vida for vacation because I posted <laughs> pictures. I got to see Sam Hall down there, and I hope, Sam, if you're watching, you're doing well. And uh, Sam and Joyce just got pregnant. So yes. congratulations to them. So happy for them. Frank, Mr. Frank, thank you so much. I feel like I'm on my journey in becoming another person in Barista 2, the documentary, maybe if they do it ever. No, um, they, they uh, already made that. Sorry. They did? They really? You're going to have to wait for the third one. Yeah, they already made two. <laughs> okay. I didn't even know. Okay, so let me get in touch with you. Okay, uh, Jordan Schlansky. Hey, I, I, I know the director, so if you need help, uh, I, I can in- Please let him know. I am on my journey. Barista 3, okay? All I right. It. Frank, stay healthy. Stay safe. I hope uh, you, Michelle, and Bailey are all doing well. Stay safe. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank and, you. Uh, 
I hope uh, we get to do this again sometime. Yes. Yes.